video is proudly brought to you by Sporlin, American made, American strong and solder weld, bringing you innovative products to the HVAC industry for brazing such as hot block, heat absorption compound. So obviously it was too loud down in the mechanical room to really talk to you guys and let you know what was going on. So we've got an old train chiller here that's got some uh, condensing temperature issues according to the customer as well as a very disturbing noise. So as you can see from the display I showed with the camera downstairs, we've got like over a 20 degree split across the condenser barrel, which is no bueno. Um, and the barrel's hot to the touch, the piping's hot to the touch. I remember on the condenser side, of a chiller system, our condensing water needs to be able to reject heat. So there's several places where we could have issues that would cause a situation with elevated head pressures, water temperatures, and increased pressure drop across the condenser barrel. You have the condenser barrel tubes themselves, which could be plugged up. You could have issues with your tower, which we're gonna go up and check now. It's a brand new tower, only two months old. So I doubt that's our issue, but I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm that we don't have any obstructions or issues with the tower itself. And then we have pump strainers. We could have a pump with a plug strainer. Uh, and as you can see from that pressure difference between the inlet and outlet water piping of the chiller, I'm gonna put my money on the pump strainer being plugged up with ladybugs or garbage, stuff like that. Stuff that the mesh screen in the tower was too big to actually catch. And a roof hatch. Go ahead and check our tower out. Don't you like that? Look at this roof hatch. Out of here. Not safe. All right, so here's our tower. So, just gonna double check that we don't have any obstructions in our sump screens, anything like that. Make sure we got enough water in the tower before we move on to pulling that pump strainer. six birds you know you never know something that something large that can plug up up here and uh, prevent our water from getting down to the suction side of the pump
so I had to kind of cut my filming short a little bit this afternoon. Uh, once I got the strainer back in, it took, I wrestled with that thing for probably a half an hour to get that head back on. Um, see, the problem is when you let the equipment go that long and it gets that full of garbage and crap, um, it's very hard to get the strainer out at times. It's almost cemented in there. And uh, it's almost impossible to get it out without bending it up a little bit. Uh, the problem with that is, is getting it back in and to sit flush in that pump housing to get the head on, it could be a little difficult. And sure enough, that's what I ran into. So uh, there was a lot of cursing and some bleeding and some other things that um, kind of made filming a second priority there. But what I can tell you is uh, it definitely made a significant impact on the performance of our chiller. As you can see here, our condenser entering water temperature and exiting water temperature is much more in line with what a proper operating chiller would look like. If you recall before when I walked in there, we had a like a 20 or 23, 24 degree split across the evaporator barrel on our temperatures. So that's way out of whack. And for those of you that are new to chillers or uh, the technology or the just the way they operate, you know, if you're not rejecting heat, if you have that high of a split, you're not moving water. And like I said earlier, you only have a couple reasons that'll happen. And it's either gonna be your pump is not operating correctly or at all, you have issues in your tower, and then the tubes in your chiller itself can plug to the point where it lowers water flow. It also prevents heat transfer from occurring. Since this is a new contract, actually, we just took this over from another company and we did our operational PMs a few weeks ago. Somebody else came by and they actually did everything but the chiller. They did the air handler and uh, the tower, uh, but didn't really look at the chiller. So I went ahead and recommended that we go ahead and knock out our comprehensive, one of our comprehensive PMs tomorrow. So um, my thinking there being, if our pump strainer was that bad, it got to the point where no water almost was flowing through it and that I could imagine a large amount of that calcium buildup, dead beetles, pieces of tower fill, etc. have probably made its way into the chiller barrel as well. So we're gonna go, we'll go ahead, we'll pull the head, we'll drain the machine, pull the heads off tomorrow, brush the tubes, change our oil filters, you know, do our, do our normal comprehensive PM on the machine since I've already opened it up today to clean out the strainer. And that about wraps it up. Again, just another example of how, you know, lack of maintenance and basic things like keeping equipment clean will bring an entire building's cooling system to its knees. That chiller takes care of that whole building, provides chilled water for that large air handler that we walked by this morning and cools the building. They had no cooling until I showed up today because of beetles beetles some of that can't be helped but a lot of it can be and i can tell that strainer had not been pulled or checked in years i didn't have a gopro today so i had to kind of put the phone down while i was doing a lot of the cleaning i had to take chisel and i had to take different tools to scrape that for about 20 minutes it was like cement chillers operate under very specific engineered parameters that if taken outside of them they will not function. But again, it's all too familiar. It's what we deal with every day and it's frankly why we're gainfully employed. So um, my complaining only goes so far. But with that guys, that's about it for today. Nothing too exciting, but I wanted to get a video up. Stay safe, we'll see you on the next one.